Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at this realistic 10-band stereo frequency equalizer. This was sold by Radio Shack in the, uh, sometime in the 80s. Realistic is their store brand for their line of audio equipment, which is kind of towards the high end of the low end, so to speak. Better than what you could buy at Kmart, but uh, not considered hi-fi in all circles. I got this used today at a thrift store for nominally $15, but with my 30% senior discount that brings me down to about 10 Equalizers have kind of fallen out of favor in recent years, mainly because uh, speakers have gotten better and because digital signal processing can do equivalent things inside a modern AV receiver, for example. But this is what you did in the old days of the 80s. Ten bands is actually a lot. They've got the frequency ranges listed for each band. We've got uh, a left side and a right side. We've got a little spectrum display. On the back we've got main in and out, left and right, tape one, monitor and out, tape two, monitor and out, and an unswitched AC outlet which is just a convenience that you can chain these units together for power. So continuing down the front we've got uh, equalizer for record, IMX expander, whatever that is. We've got monitor on one and monitor two dubbing. So you can tell that this was kind of directed at tape copying of some form. The other main use for a unit like this is to uh, even out the frequency response of a set of speakers. Uh, suppose you've got a speaker that's got a peak somewhere you could cut that a little bit or it's a little bit lacking on the low end you could increase that so this is in effect a very sophisticated tone control you could say we got the spectrum analyzer feature which will kind of help you see where you stand I've got all these switches set to zero DB meaning no effect basically and you can raise and lower those as needed on each side independently there's also a display level button to kind of keep the uh, bars in the spectrum display within range we'll try that out so as our first step we're going to turn on our watt meter I've got this hooked up through that we'll see how much power this draws it's turned off right now Go to the watts setting, zero watts, that makes sense. Turn it on and hope for some lights. Got a power light there. There's no signal coming into this, so maybe the spectrum display light is uh, okay, the lack of those. Got 13 watts, which seems reasonable for a small unit like this. So, so far so good. I've hooked this up uh, through my little stereo setup here in my lab area. I've got it piped into the front of this Yamaha receiver being driven by my cell phone through the back. So we'll turn this on. I heard a little low frequency rumble there. So this is some copyright free music that I found at random by the Mini Vandals. You can actually hear it coming out on this side. Let's play with the settings and see what we can come up with. I'm going to turn up the volume here.
So the base responded when I ran these base up. See if I can get the spectrum analyzer to do anything. Maybe I need to turn up the volume on the phone to get more volume into the unit here. So I got the bass turned way down at this point. Go back to nominal there. Display seems to work fine. Gonna go to bypass mode. Which should mean that these levers don't have any effect. Just use the lower three. Turn off bypass. Gets a lot bassier. Let's try boosting the high frequencies. I'm on bypass right now. That's with the highs boosted, but bypass out, bypass in, so this is kind of straight through basically. Let's take bypass out. We'll just boost like the dead center three here. So it kind of got that telephone sort of sound, which is characteristic of uh, this type of band. Has a nice little detent to it. I don't know what IMX expander is, but let's try that and see what it sounds like. There's to be some sort of music enhancement effect. One of the reasons this is so bassy is it's coming out of this subwoofer here. Oh, I guess this uh, level button applies to the IMX expander. So I can tell that's having more effect when it's towards max versus min. I thought originally this was an overall volume button, but that's not the case after all. Straighten those out. So I haven't tried absolutely every feature of this, but it seems to be a real success so far. And everything that I've tried works as expected. 
Let's drive this down and up. know what EQ record is for. Let's try that. Maybe that's uh, some sort of preset that's designed to record well onto uh, let's say cassette tapes or even eight tracks from this era. So this is a real success. Having only paid ten dollars for this unit uh, I think I can get more from it on eBay as a vintage audio piece. It's in good condition. Seems to work perfectly. And we'll go from there. Next we're going to take the lid off of this and see what's inside. But before I do that, let me make some guesses about what's in there. I think it's got a small power supply, uh, transformer, bridge rectifier, filtering capacitors, really basic power supply. It has lots of op amps, probably quad op amps and dip packages. Uh, lots of miscellaneous capacitors and resistors and uh, some sort of driver chip for this LED display as well as uh, you know miscellaneous wiring and so on taking all the screws out of the lid here we'll just pull that off you can see a little grime around the edges we'll see how my predictions turned out okay We've got one major large circuit board here, a smaller board that operates the switches and controls. Um, figured there'd be a lot of parallel circuits here for, I guess they didn't use op amps, they used some sort of uh, simple transistor amplifiers. So we can kind of imagine, let's say this is one channel left or right, and then this is the other one. You've probably got ten sets of pretty much the same thing with different resistor values maybe to kind of set the nominal um, frequency response. Got these boards that go with the sliders on this side. So these are basically variable resistors over here. And those work in conjunction with some sort of fixed resistors for each um, for each band. Here we've got the simple power supply that I expected. Little transformer. This back power outlet is just a direct wire to the the power cord. Um, here's some large capacitors that are, this is probably the other part of the power supply. Large capacitors for filtering. Um, here are the only ICs that I see, which probably drives the LEDs. We've got our little input panel on in the back, which is just direct to the circuit board. Nowadays something like this would probably be entirely surface mount chips but in this era um, leaded components were the thing. I don't even know if surface mount chips had become kind of popular yet but just about any component that isn't very large can be surface mounted now Certainly all the resistors, the smaller capacitors, you know, not some of the bigger capacitors and uh, whether these are power transistors or diodes, they're probably, my guess is these are regulators for maybe one for the left and one for the right side. There's kind of a duality here. Here we see 
what appears to be eight diodes so that's two full wave bridge rectifiers this probably creates a separate positive and negative supply voltage uh, with a center tap as ground from the transformer in fact let's trace that a little bit this goes in the two in and looks like three out along with maybe a secondary voltage for something else so this is pretty much what I expected the only real surprise here was the use of transistors for each band as opposed to op amps that may make more sense I kinda of think of op amps as sort of the general solution to any analog filtering problem of, a, of an audio frequency but you know maybe it's cheaper and in some way to just use plain old transistors here so with that we'll end our tour of this realistic 10 band stereo frequency equalizer from the 80s looks like a very nice unit I may sell it I may keep it but what I do plan to do with it is in a future video try it out against some speakers I have uh, I have some low-end speakers that may not sound the greatest and we'll see if we can improve that with an equalizer in a future video please like and subscribe if you subscribe to the idea of disassembling things for fun like I do thanks for watching and bye bye